Hey guys, welcome to the first of hopefully many videos in this Unity Crash Course series. Um, in this video, we're just going to be doing a quick tutorial for how to make a cube move around and change colors. Um, very simple, very cool. Um, if you want a detailed explanation of what we'll be learning, um, go ahead and check out the description. Alright, so first things first, go ahead and open up Unity and go to File, New Project. And we're going to rename it by changing this text here. I'm going to call it New, uh, let's call it Cube Tutorial Awesome. You can call it whatever you like, it really doesn't matter. Alright, so here's a brand new blank Unity project. Um, it, it looks like a lot, I know, especially if it's your first time opening it. Um, so let's get a little bit familiar with these windows. There are five main windows here. That's really all you have to know to make all kinds of various games. Um, the first one we're going to be dealing with is the project window. This is where all the assets go. Um, usually if you're in a development team, you have artists, musicians, you know, all these different guys giving you files that have to go into the game. This is where you import them, and this is where you're going to access them. They're called assets in the game development community. So you're going to go ahead and get used to good habits of organizing your project. Um, so go ahead and right click on assets, go to create folder. We're going to call this one scenes, and then we're going to create another one that's called scripts. Uh, you don't have to worry about what scenes are yet. Uh, we we're going to get to that in just a minute. So this is a new blank uh, scene that Unity has given us here. Um, that's what you get when you make a brand new project for the first time. So we have our scene window here, and that's going to show us all the stuff we have in our scene. You can like move around. Um, the best way to do that is uh, what I like to do is, if you're familiar with Counter-Strike, you'll love this, uh, no clipping. You hold down right click, and then WASD, E, E and Q, and you can kind of move around really easily if you're used to first person shooter games especially. But uh, all right, the scene is blank and depressing, so let's go ahead and add a cube to it. So in the hierarchy is where all the stuff in your scene is going to show up. The general idea is you're going to add stuff to the hierarchy and then save the scene and then load new scenes when you got to do different stuff. So like you'll have a scene for your menu, a scene for your first level, second level, third level credits. So like when you finish the first level, you'll call a script that loads the second level and it'll just have a whole new hierarchy with all new stuff in it that's the second level stuff. That's the general idea. So let's go into the hierarchy and go to create cube. Now, first things first, let's go ahead and save our scene. I like to do control S or you can go to file save. So let's save it in the scenes folder as cube scene or whatever you'd like to call it. Now notice in the project folder here, if you go to assets scenes, um, we have our scene saved. So in the hierarchy, um, whenever you click on an object, you'll notice some stuff changes. In the scene window here, you can actually move objects around. Um, depending on where your camera was, it might not be in the cube might not have appeared in front of the camera correctly. So let's go ahead and reset the cube's position, um, and this is a good time to learn about the inspector. So whenever you click on any object, it's going to show everything that has to do with that object in the inspector. You don't have to know what any of this stuff is for now. Um, for example, though, you, you know, if you go to main camera, you can like change the background color easily by just doing that. So that's the general idea. You have like, game objects that all have various stuff in them to make them do different things, and you edit them by checking out the inspector. So all right, let's go ahead and make this cube appear in front of the camera. Um, there's a couple of different ways we can do this. Uh, You'll notice this transform here is showing our position, rotation, and scale. So let's go ahead and make the position 0, 0, 0. A faster way to do that is to click this little gear and click reset. Now you should be seeing your cube in front of the camera. Um, if you click on the camera and look in the scene, you'll notice that it shows you this kind of view of what it's looking at. And that's kind of helpful sometimes to like get a better visual uh, aid for what you're looking at. So all right, we're looking at our cube. Everything's looking good. Um, let's talk real quick about how we move and rotate things in the scene. You can click these arrows and drag things around to move them. If you want to rotate them, you just click up here. Rotate. I'm going to undo that. Um, scale. Make things bigger or smaller. So like if we were making a Pong game or something similar, we would just make a really long paddle by doing something like that. All righty. So let's go ahead and get this cube in front of our camera a little bit closer here. 
and uh, I encourage you guys to noodle around as much as you have time to. Uh, that's really the best way to learn Unity. Um, just kind of mess around, click on different things, um, and we'll get into that, especially when we get into the scripting. Um, but for now, let's go ahead and make this cube do something. Let's go into our scripts folder in the project, go to right click, create, C sharp script. Um, if you're wondering about whether or not to use JavaScript or C sharp, just stick with C sharp. It's just as easy to learn as JavaScript, and all the Unity developer jobs I've seen posted require C sharp. Um, it's overall a better language and more versatile, so we're going to go with C sharp in this series. Um, let's call this script cube movement. Sounds good. Um, you can call it whatever you'd like, though. Now, one way to get a script onto an object is to just drag it from the project over to our scene hierarchy. And if you did it correctly, it should show up now in the inspector. Um, that's how we know we did it right. There's other ways to do it, but we'll get into that later. So let's go ahead and open our cube movement script. Um, you can double click it in the project, or you can just uh, go to your cube in the hierarchy and double click it here, whatever you'd like. Um, now, you, sh you should have opened a program called MonoDevelop. You'll see the same code I'm looking at here, except it's a different program that comes with Unity. Um, don't worry about that. It's going to be the same exact code. So I'm um, assuming that uh, people watching this have little programming experience, maybe, maybe none. So I'm just going to go over uh, the essentials for this specific tutorial. Um, for now, don't worry about any of this stuff up here. Just make sure it's there for now, and we'll explain it uh, in a couple videos later. All right, so when you start a new script, you get two functions here that Unity gives you, void start and void update. All the code you put inside void start is going to run as soon as the scene loads. So, you know, um, stuff like maybe if you're gonna like play a song or, you know, load some assets or something, it goes right here in the start function. So for now, uh, let's get a good idea on how to deal with that by uh, changing the color of the cube when the scene starts. Um, the way you do that is you type renderer.material.color equals color.cyan. Um, there's multiple ways to do this. There's always going to be a million different ways to do things. Uh, there isn't usually never one way that's best. Um, Oh, and now would be a good time to show you the power of Google with Unity. Because um, I know a lot of the stuff can seem like it's like really hard to remember and it's really just, uh, too much at times. Um, the best thing you can do is just always Google any problem you ever encounter in Unity. Um, I swear, like, even at the super higher level when you're doing really intense stuff like networking algorithms and stuff, you can just Google your way to success, I promise you. So here, right now, let's let's just go ahead and see an example of that. I'm just going to Google how to change the color of a cube unity and it comes up right here um, as you saw there's like a bunch of different explanations and uh, here's a little bit lengthier explanation than we'll need for this tutorial but it's generally good information to know they give you the c-sharp code that's just about the same code we had except they're giving a specific color and we're just doing the shorthand and here's the javascript code so we're going to use the c-sharp code so there you go um, Something good to know is using like something that's hard to get at first, but is very useful to like use for noodling and doing your own little experimentations and stuff is the dots. So like for example, you know, we have like renderer dot and then it opens up a big list of stuff to choose from. And this is like a big way that I learned uh, all the Unity language by uh, just kind of going through these and looking at them and Googling them and just messing around and see what different things do. So that's generally a good way to just kind of like mess around and figure stuff out. So if we did this all correctly, let's save our script and go back to Unity. And we're going to go ahead and hit play. And boom, our cube has changed color. Um, down here is the game window. That's what you're going to be seeing when you play. Um, you should have figured that out by now, though. Um, you can maximize on play or not. It's up to you. Um, something to note is while you're playing, if you can move stuff around in your scene, it'll change, but nothing will save when you unplay. So keep that in mind. That's good to know. All right, so now that we're changing the color of our cube, we understand what start does. Let's go ahead and dive right into update. So while start only goes once at the start of a scene, update happens every frame of the game. So usually games run at like 30 or 60 frames per second. 
Um, that's about what ours will be at. So the, the idea is generally, whenever you move an object in Unity, you increment it in small little bits at a time per frame. So, you know, over like 30 or 60 times in a second, we increment it a little bit, and that's what creates smooth motion over time. That's how it's always done. So first things first, we've got to detect our inputs. We're going to have it so when we press a key, the cube moves. So we type if, parentheses, input dot get key. And you got to make sure the capitalization is uh, um, like mine is, or else it won't work. Open parentheses, key code, dot, and we can choose our key. I'm going to use left arrow. And then we're going to open and close our scope. So what this is going to do, now, all this code is going to run every frame, no matter what. Like, all this code has to run before the next frame starts. So if you have, like, a lot of messy code in here and it's, like, way too much on the computer, it'll start lagging your game, for example. So let's go ahead and move this cube. Um, every frame that the left arrow is held down, this code is going to run. So the way we do it is transform, translate. Um, so we're moving left, so that's negative on the X. We can see that by going back to our scene, clicking on our cube, and then see the cameras over here so we know it's like this way. And then you see the X is the red arrow, so we know that if it's facing this way, that's where positive is. So we got to go negative if we're going left. And then we're not going to move on the Y because this is only the left arrow. not going to move on the Z either. All right. Now, if you did that successfully, um, when you go to hit play, you should be able to move the cube to the left with the left arrow. Alrighty. Now, like I said before with the dots, you know, just a quick little note here. Transform is how you access all the movement and rotation of an object. There's a lot of stuff in here, like advanced math functions you can use for all kinds of crazy stuff, like physics you'll do later on. Um, transform is actually this this thing we just looked at before here in the inspector. So these are components, and you access the components. Bec like Because this script is attached to the cube, you can just type transform, and it'll grab that specific cube's transform. So if we had, like, you know, say, two different cubes, and then, like, one of them was detecting WASD and the other one was detecting left arrow, they would both move independently of each other. So that's good to know. Um, now we're lazy, so we're going to go ahead and copy and paste this. I'm just going to fill out this code. Um, hopefully you guys have gotten a good understanding of it by now. You should be able to see what I'm doing. Right arrow, we're going to go positive on the X. Up arrow, we're going to go ahead and go positive on the Y. Um, oh yeah, the reason I'm putting the Fs at the end of each number is because that's how you represent floating point numbers, like anything with a decimal, essentially. Um, integers, like, you know, just whole numbers, don't need that F. Um, so good to keep in mind because it won't work if that F is not there. So up arrow is going to be that, and then down arrow is going to be negative because we're going down on the Y, where the arrow shows you which direction positive moves towards. So if we did everything correctly here, um, we should be able to now move our cube in every direction. I'm going to click maximize on play, boom, and there you have it. Cube is now moving around. So. Now that we've got our cube moving, um, you might want to do some noodling of your own at this point. I encourage always to do your own experimentation. It's the best way to learn by doing. Um, I'm going to go over a couple more useful things for scripting um, that you don't necessarily need to know at this point, but it's good to start getting these ideas in your head of how we're going to use these tools later on. So what I want to do is change the color of the cube when I press the spacebar. Um, and then when I let go of the spacebar, it changes back to the color I was before. Now, get key, there's three different kinds of get keys. The get, this one we used right here, get key, is every frame it's currently held down, this code's going to run. But if we use get key down, this will only run the time, like the very time you pushed it. So like if I push the space bar and hold it down, this code will only run once because it's the frame I push this key down. So every, every update, it's checking all these inputs. Get key will do it every time if that key is currently held down. Get key down will do it only when it's pushed down on that frame. So when we push the key down, remember how to change color. 
uh, whatever you'd like, do green. And then so, therefore, Oh yeah, by the way, this is how you uh, type stuff without having it do anything to the game. You put slash slash, and you can just type away, and it won't affect the script or the game at all. Just so you know. You guys probably already know that if you've got a little bit of coding experience. Alright, so if we did everything correctly here, let's save our scripts. Go back to Unity, hit play. And voila, when we hit space, it changes to that, and when we let go, it changes back. And we can still move it around, you can spam it. Alright, so we know some good stuff now. We can <laughs> go ahead and do some serious noodling. I always encourage it. Um, one more thing I want to show you guys is how to print stuff. Um, this is one of the most useful things for programming. Um, it's a way for you to just kind of uh, show little messages to yourself uh, while you're debugging the game. So, for example, um, when we when we push the the spacebar down, we're going to print. Um, and the way you like the way you uh, don't worry about the quote notation right now. If you're not familiar with it, we're going to get into it in a later episode. Just know you put two quotes, and then whatever goes inside of these will be what you print. So, let's go ahead and put I pressed the spacebar down. Here, I released the spacebar. Okay, so if we did this all correctly, um, I'm not going to maximize on play this time. I'm hit play, and every time I hit the spacebar, notice it kind of shows me this little message down here. And the really cool thing about this is, if you click on the message, it shows you all the messages in this nice little window. And if you double click on one of these, it'll show you the it'll bring you to the line of code. So this becomes extremely useful later on for debugging large scripts with all kinds of physics in them and stuff. So let's see, like one more thing here. Um, so we printed this message in between the quotes. Now we can add other messages like this. Um, you know, it's like if we did this, it'll print out I press the spacebar down, also stuff because you can literally add um, string. It's called they're called strings um, of letters together. So, but we can also utilize our transform.position. And what this is going to do is print out the message. Um, here, let's make this better. Now, this will print out where what our position was when we pressed the spacebar down. How cool is that? I know, right? So exciting. All right, so hopefully we did this all correctly. Um, here's one good look at it. Um, if you're, you know, pausing through this video and kind of like fumbling around with it, this would be a good time to just kind of make sure all your stuff looks identical. All right, let's go ahead and give it a go. So now we click on their message and see how it's printing all our positions when we pressed and released the spacebar each time. How awesome is that? All right, that pretty much concludes this tutorial. Uh, thanks so much for watching if you got through all this. Um, this is my first tutorial ever, so I'm totally down for feedback and suggestions. Um, I've put a link to this entire project in the description. If, say, you know you had a problem, you couldn't figure it out, uh, this way you can go ahead and download the finished project and then kind of compare it to yours and see where you went wrong. Um, yeah, so all feedback and suggestions are greatly welcomed. I encourage it. Um, happy noodling, guys. Until next time, I'll see you later.